And hello again, Internet. Well, here we are with another free-to-play game review. This one is actually the sister game to Animation Throwdown I'd mentioned earlier. And during the Animation Throwdown review, I mentioned I kind of liked Animation Throwdown better because of the combo system and a little bit more tactics to it. You know, you could create gaps in your opponent's line, whereas this one, they all shuffle toward the side when that happens. I've actually started taking a liking more to this one a little bit better. In fact, I haven't really been playing Animation Throwdown lately. This one has a little bit more actual story to it. Although I still don't think the cards are all that great. And I don't... I, the missing combo system does kind of hurt. At any rate, we'll go ahead and take a look at this particular version of the game. This is the Steam version. Again, this is on Congregate, hence that red K up there. But it's on Steam. The accounts can link up. You can play that way. Again, it has it has guilds, it has guild wars, quests, all that fun stuff. All kinds of features on this one that the other one doesn't have. So let's first start up by jumping into a match and taking a look at it here. Now, I usually play this with a sound off. It's something I can just sit there and pick, 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 pick at for a little bit. In fact, generally speaking, I usually keep this on autoplay and just bing 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 through the matches which isn't the best thing to do but eh, it happens at any rate you see we have this world map here and it's got this it's got stars on all these things now that is what animation throwdown changed to from what it used to be what this is is you have a master yet when you first complete the thing you get this card then this then this when you get up to the fifth time you start getting this on the seventh one you get this card now what these are is these are commons you get four of them which lets you quad fuse a common two uncommons one rare well actually rare and epic but you know what i think about naming the second rarity rare and as you see this one you have four matches to get into to get the things this is you know the first level it's the one that helps get you into the design and all that and as you see, there are quite a few of these paths. And I haven't finished all of them. I've only finished a few for the most part. The thing is also, they've, they're have they adding more content to this game. New cards, new areas. This place, as you see, the, news, the new quest here is still locked. It's not going to be ready for another 10 days that we'll actually be able to get in here. And you see just how many quests there are per and what kind of prizes you get now mostly in the newer ones you get some arcane ores so that you can get more dust which is what those things are for you get a um epic of whatever is the current this is for the new ones whatever is the current or newly boosted troop type in this case it's insects and as you keep going you can get this thing. Now, what this is is irrelevant as far as, you know, this is a bug, whoop de doo What this is is a piece to be used to create epic cards. You need a couple different pieces. You need the one at the end of these, and you generally need ones from a special set, which, well, isn't out yet, whatever the, the other half of that is. For example, in the previous adventure... You were getting um, these spell stones here, these eggs, effectively, because last one was dragons and then elementals. And the other half of it, that's not it, is right here. And as you see, the last four of these give you dragon's breath essences, and I've only managed to collect one of them. There's, there's four of them, so you can quad-fuse it, of course, because, again, quad-fusing is as high as it gets. And that's how you get some power cards now. That's how you unlock and earn supposedly high-end cards. Yeah, they're okay. I'm not... My deck isn't quite powerful enough to yet to get them all the time. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. It's getting more and more powerful slowly. Now, what are these things up here? Well, this is a quest right now to collect the most honeycombs. And you have, as you see, 600 hours for this. This quest goes for as long as this section is new. And you can see what kind of rewards you get. Now, I'm definitely not getting this one. 
but if you did get if you are the one who collects the most you get a quad fused legendary as well as a few other things there's a legendary pack that thousand pieces will get you a legendary pack get some dust here I'll show you what the dust is for you get legendary fragments you get all kinds of good stuff I usually end up around this range here. In fact, right now I'm sitting down here, but I usually end up around here. So, even then, I mean, I get a I get a fused one already. So, that's not too bad. Basically, the people at the top are ones who are spending money on the game, getting lots of adventures and play 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 all the time. So, let's go ahead and see what a round looks like here. As you see when you come in, you get a bit of story. Now, since I've already mastered it once, I don't get the second part of the story. You just have the little blurbs here, but sometimes on your first time through, when you go to battle, one of the characters will pop up and actually do a little bit of dialogue. And there's no voice actor or anything, just a little bit of dialogue there. Now, as you see, the cards here are similar to the other ones. You've got your attack power, your health, but there's a delay here. That is what makes this one different from... My words have just failed. Animation Throwdown. And also, they have up to three abilities. This one, as you see, is Dual Fused. And there are runes. And we'll get into the runes into the second here. This one's got a Room of Armor. Rune of Armor, which is why armor is a different color here. It has a six. Normally, it's a four. So, let's go ahead and, as you see... This one takes four turns to activate. This one takes three turns to activate. This one only takes two turns to activate. Notice this one has armor six. It gives everything barrier three, which is, well, armor effectively, and dual strike every three turns. Every three turns it'll attack twice, and when it does that, it does the barrier again. But it takes four turns for this thing to go off. However, it's really powerful, so I'm going to go ahead and put it first. As you see, it has six attack, only six attack, 33 health. Okay. Now, what I like to do, and I've seen a lot of other players do this, I like to go like 4, 3, 2, 1, so everything activates at the same time. So we're going to do the Glass Titan now. This is another defense one, and it's got a legendary rune on it. Weaken all plus 50%. So this is a weaken all 5, which is instead of 3. And as you see, this is a quad fuse. This, this is as good as this guy gets. He's got armor of his own. He can give something barrier. And you can also weaken all of your opponent's creatures. So these two together mean that all of my characters get a bunch of barrier. All of his characters get weakened. That's a huge defense tactic right off the beginning. Now I can do one of these three things here. Now Narx here is a special one. He's not fused, but he can't fuse. This is a unique card that you can buy in the shop an egg and you have to power it up. And I'll show you how to do that in a bit. I've only gotten him up to epic. He's okay. He's only really in this deck because dragons used to be boosted. You'll see a lot of dragons in this deck. Right now, elementals are boosted. If I have an element, which the glass guy there is, the increase, their attack is increased by 75%. That's pretty, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. The other boosts right now are insects, which I don't really have any, and they gain venom. And Venom just sits there, they take additional damage, and additional damage from all of the sources. So that's pretty awesome ability. However, there haven't really been that many insects, they're starting to add more now because of this, and well, I have not earned any. So I've got a couple choices in front of me now. I can either drop him, which I don't really want to because he's not that strong, or have something that will delay even longer. This guy is one of the more powerful ones, and back when, for a while, Undead and Seafolk were both boosted when this guy was out, oh, he was a monster. But right now he has invisibility, two, so he can avoid up to two enemy skills. For example, the weaken would not hit him right away. He's got corrosive five, which means when an enemy hits him, it weakens their attack. And hex all three increases the damage dealt to all enemy creatures. Well, that hex is powerful. This guy's a great one, which is why he's a legendary card, as is the dragon up there. Let's go ahead and throw him out. And as you see, my opponent doesn't really have that much. He's got single-use stuff. Another three. This one's got Corrosive again. It's a powerful ability. Bolt all three. Bolt just does damage to the enemy creature. Just zap. And this one bolts all, so zaps everyone. And then Frost Breath. Basically, it's kind of like the bomb. 
it hits the damage to the card in front and to the card on either side. So we're going to drop him down, because, again, he's fun. Ah, this guy just got frozen. Now, I could drop a 2 with the Defiant there, or Narix there, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and skip to the Chaos Tempest. Now, as you can see, I'm not going to go in all the way. He's got Bolt, Nullify. Nullify will remove one of the enemy's abilities. So, for example, if it's been boosted, it'll take that off. And Siphon, which means when it hits, it gains 5 health back. So, there we go. And as you see with that, everyone just got barriered twice. So he is just knocking on the barrier, not doing anything. Let's go ahead and drop this Ice Stone Brute here. He's got Empower 5, Hex, and Freeze. And Freeze is what you saw happen to my Glass Giant there. It just basically says, you're stunned for the turn. Happens every four turns. And Empower just increases the attack of one of your creatures. So I will win this one pretty handily. Archer of Two Worlds, Invisibility 2, and two different Bolt attacks. And a lot of these cards are pay cards. Here's a, here's one card that was just really powerful when it came out. Corrosive 5, Pierce 8, Berserk 2. Berserk means it gains two health every or two attack every turn. And that Corrosive means it's hard to kill. As you see, no problem with that. And I collected an item, Blue Fire Soul. One thing this game has is tons of items. I'm going to do one quick battle here again. I'm not going to go through what everything is. I'm just going to start playing cards. And I'm kind of going to show you guys what some of the items are. What happens when you actually get a... Well, at the end of the Star Mastery, since literally it was these two fights to... Ma to get the second star mastery here, and again, these, this thing's not going to kill me. Not with these cards. Not at that level. Now that, I will admit, is one problem I have with this game and games like it. Well, there's the Venom right there. Especially the online free-to-play ones like this. Generally speaking, the higher-end cards, and this is true also with Animation Throwdown, the numbers are just flat out better they have the same same selection of special effects and uh, powers to choose from the higher up in rarity you go the more powerful those numbers the bigger those numbers are the bigger the numbers the better the card so at the end of the day see there you go I got the arcane ore for the mastery here we also got a honeycomb this time so at the end of the day, oh, I completed a quest. I've gotten that one to Mastery 2. Let's collect that, and what do we get? 400 gold. All right. We can take a look, see what kind of quests are available here and what the prizes are. And it's good stuff all around. Collect how many stars. That gets you an epic pack. This gets you a legendary pack. And like I said, we'll show what some of these are. Um, so with a honeycomb, what does it do? Well, you come here. And if I had 50, I could upgrade something. I can either give all of my creatures Armor 1, all of my creatures Siphon 1, or all of the creatures Berserk 1. I would go with Berserk. But I don't know if it actually works yet, because it's locked. And there's no graphics. So maybe those are things that you can't just activate right away, that you have to unlock them first. Which might be at the end of this. So I'm not sure. So as I was saying, the higher... And, and that's one thing I don't like. The higher end cards are just going to be flat out better. And beyond that, of course, there are premium cards. Cards that you pay for with the special packs and all that stuff. And yes, those tend to be even better than the normal cards. However, stuff like, well, I showed you that one spear guy, the chicken with the spear, that has corrosive pierce and... Berserk, he was also offered up as a prize. So the prize cards can be good too. You can earn them that way. So let's take a look number down here at the inventory. Now, as I mentioned, there's all kinds of things. You got arena coins, you have epic pack fragments, I have energy potions, which just 
give me more energy. I have a ton of these I'm saving up. Look at that. 17 plus 20 energies. That right there, I'm sitting on, what, 340 energy I could use? But you also saw that it takes like 9 per right now on those, or up to 10 or even higher. Gold bars, these are just straight up give me 150 gold, and I tend to save them for when I need them. Bounty refills, I'll show you what bounty is, and again, whole bunch of those. Arcane fragments, I can use 20 of these. In fact, let's go ahead and do that real quick to make an arcane ore. They're also used for other things. Now the Heart of the Blue Fire, you get this partly during the quest. Pretty much after the beginning stuff, it gives you this to help increase how much energy you get. Recharge weight increased by 20, and you start getting these things, Blue Fire Souls. When you get 40 of these, you get a, you get a green, an, a rare card. Usually rare. I've actually gotten higher than that. Again, I kind of been saving these. And then you see the all these items: spell stones, Titan core, an extra deck slot, Ember souls. These are used to power up the dragon. Brian souls, Wind souls, Wind soul focus, Mist pearl, Snow dust. All these various things. Infinity spell stone. I have no idea why that's gone right now. Why the graphics ward are missing? Purple fire souls. There's one of those spell stones I was talking about. Honeycombs, inscription powder, rune shells, and a bunch of runes. Lots of inventory on this stuff. So, what is all this inventory for? Well, you see this hammer here. There's a crafting system in this game. Now, you've already seen me craft the arcane ore. You see, let me craft a blue fire pack, which is just a green or higher card. The epic packs here, you need a thousand. You need a thousand to create those, and I don't have a thousand on either of those. But here you see what these are for. You can either get Atlas, Solarin, or Volcanus. You, only one of these is the thing, too. You need all three of these stones and all nine cores. I've only earned eight, so I can't craft one yet. But these are only, these, that's all you get. I don't think you ever get any extras of these. So you could have to choose which of the three Titans you want. And notice that this is a new legendary. This is a mythic. Or a new type of spell. Card rarity. Mythic. It's got invisibility 2. Empower all. Heal all. Now this one is you, see you can't fuse it. Here's as good as it gets. That's a pretty powerful card. They all are pretty powerful. Oops. Atlas, Solarin, Volcanus. I'll show you some Volcanus here. Look at this. Bolt all. Vengeance 7. Scorch 5. Very powerful stuff. And here's the list again. Um, there's the Mist Pearls and the Stones, which I don't have any of these, so I can't make one yet. Zulog, I have two, or I, yeah, I have two of these eggs, but I don't have any of the fire yet. I've already made one. I can make up to three more. I earn three more. Uh, Infinity, you need this Spellstone, which, again, the graphics are missing, and these feathers, which I don't have any feathers at the moment. Verus here, I need a thousand of these orbs and the hat. So that's what all these crafting for, is crafting high-end cards. Then there's these, the runes. Well, you need a rune shell, then you need enough um, blue fire souls, dust, inscription powder, and arcane fragments to make a rune. And now, well, you saw me use this and this. I didn't have enough for this anyway. I was close, actually. I was very close. I was at 113. But that's how you make the runes, and I'll show you what some of the runes that I have are. And there's a legendary version, but you need three runestone pieces to make one. And so here's an example of some of the runes that I have. We have Rune of Mydra Vengeance, Rune of Fever, Fervor, excuse me, Minor, the, the, these are minor, the others are, I think, major. Frost Breath, Valor, Nullification, and as you see, I'm not actually using all these, because some of these are not that useful to me. That is! Bolt is, but I don't have anything I'm actually using it on at the moment. So, you can enhance your cards with the runes. You can only put one rune on per card, but you can, well, let's actually do that right now. Go to the Upgrade. 
And this is what the dust is for I was talking about. You can vaporize cards to turn into dusts. It's similar to the Giggity Watts on Arcane, or excuse me, Animation Throwdown, only this one, has it works differently. For example, um, okay, so let's say I had two of these. It would cost, you know, five to do the first part, and then 15, 30. That's not right. Yeah, it would. Okay, so that's five, 15, 30, 75, 150. You get two of those maxed out, you fuse them together, you'd have those two marks on the side like this. Then it goes back to five. So then it would be five, 15, 30, 75, 150. So. It takes more at the beginning, but once you fuse them, you can start leveling them up quickly, which is why I don't really have any lower end fuse down here. Uh, I do, but it's one that I earned on a prize thing. Oh, up, now I've already upgraded a little bit. So it makes it honestly more expensive, especially early on, because that's where the bulk of the cost is, is to fuse them. Whereas in Animation Throwdown, it gets more expensive the higher up you get. So that one rear, you know, back loads the price. This one front loads the price. So again, then you have to put the runes on things. You saw that I had one that had a bolt rune right now. Do I have anything down here that could use bolt? Not at the moment. Show the inventory. Da da da. Well, you but I'd rather have Berserk on that. Berserk's hard to find, though. It's a good it's a good skill. But yeah, that's how you add... You'd, you'd like bring it up here, you go to your rune menu, and it would select from the list what you could actually put on it. Uh, for example... Oh, hey, Fervor. There we go. See, I could put Fervor on here. I wouldn't want to, but I could. You also have Heroes. Now, again... Animation Throwdown did as well. You had the various characters from the show as your avatar. In this one, you have, well, a whole book full of them. You only start with three. These three. And now you'll notice they've got the same star marking. Well, actually, these three started as commons, which you can do some quests to upgrade. I'd show you them, but I've already upgraded every one. You then spend, as you see, the Arcane Dust just like you would on cards, to upgrade these guys. You can see what kind of upgrades they get. Now, most of these have already been upgraded. I go through and upgrade them anyway. And there's a good variety of them. They've also been rebalanced lately. Where is she? Ironically enough, she, one of the original three characters you get, once upgraded, used to be the most powerful. She had all kinds of good stuff on her. She's still pretty powerful, but not as bad as she used to be. They, they rebalanced a bit. For example, this Enhance Berserk, that used to be Imbue Berserk. What Enhance does is a creature that has Berserk gets increased. So the Berserk 2 would become a Berserk 3. What Imbue does is it grants something that. So it used to be Imbue Berserk 1, any card would get a Berserk. And that was pretty strong. It's still strong, but not as strong. And I'm using Grok here, because he's pretty defensive. All my invisibility gets enhanced, so anything that has invisibility gets even more, so it's harder to hit me with stuff. All of my creatures get stronger, and something gets a barrier. So you can change that way, and as you see, I do have multiple decks. I don't know how many you can buy, but I have a couple different ones here, which right now I have mostly the same cards because they're both because those are pretty much my best cards. You also notice that you you have 15 card decks, and they have to be 15. You can't have 14. You can't have 16. It has to be 15 cards, and you're only allowed. Wait, what? Why does it say I have one mythic? What mythic do I have? Is it you? It is you. 
Wow. Okay, that to me is a big glitch. I'll bring him back in. Where is he? Because that's not a mythic right now. That's a rare. But he counts as one of my three mythics that you can put in. You're only allowed three. I don't know how many are even in the game that you could obtain, to be honest. So, I mentioned this guy, Narix. Everyone else you use the Arcane Powder for? Not him. I need Ember Souls. I need 250. I get 250 Ember Souls. He becomes the Tyrant here. You power him up. Then even more Ember Souls. That's the Mythic version. Obviously, I don't have that yet. And you'll notice that he's actually animated as a Mythic, too. So you get Ember Souls during some of the quests. You can also buy them occasionally. That's how you power him up. And as you see, I haven't done so. It takes a long time. So, quests, cards, crafting, all this fun stuff. You also have PvP. You have a couple different types of PvP. As you have, there's an event going on right now, and there's always this big monthly or weekly event here that gets a rewards every so often. Ooh, that looks like a nice reward. I'm not going to get that. I'm going to be down here somewhere, as usual. And you have a good deal of them pop up here, and you can actually... That's what the bounty scrolls that I have for. You have levels with the... Uh, Wow, okay, Brain. You have arena levels, just like you do in um, Animation Throwdown, except the arena levels are different here. These are the top players, and wow, they have a lot of stuff. Only level eight, uh, level 18 is, I guess, the highest. Wow, and I'm level 17, which means I'm getting close to it. Yeah, it is the highest. 18 is the highest level. So I didn't realize that I was so close. But as you see, you start down here at level 1. You get 10 gold, you get maximum of 5 bounties, and you get 15 gold per. Here you start unlocking other characters. Unlocking more characters, more bounties, more bounties allowed. Once you get to level 10, you start getting items from the bounties. That's where you start finding the rune shells and the rune slivers. And as you keep going, you get even more and more and more drop. So I'm at the point where 135 gold, roughly, as you see, you can actually get more per bounty. And I can get arcane fragments, rare rune shells, epic rune shells, legendary slivers just keeps getting higher and higher and I didn't realize that I did not realize that 18 was as high as it went huh now these play like the PvP does in animation throwdown you start a battle and you're just playing against a computer's deck now one note about this is if you play first your first card the delay is not increased by one well, never mind then. I guess that only happens in other events. And as you see, this guy's got a bug here, so I'm already starting to get hurt. I am probably going to lose this one off the bat. Yeah, just because I had a kind of bad start with my cards there. Or not. She is so powerful. I love her. Now I'm going to do the same thing as I usually do. Drop the two, two, no. Four, three, two, one. Come at me, bro. Now, see, her big attack is the two bolts, but they're gone now, so whatever. Now, all of my stuff is a little bit protected, but all of his stuff is a bit protected by this guy, who's got flame breath extra. That's weird. This one heals everyone, which is why I like him. You're going to die soon. Now, you notice that when they die, they all shuffle sideways more as opposed to the other game which would leave a gap so when you play some it would just go to the first closest gap now it just goes to the end every time as you see I'm losing this one so yay go me that's because I'm relying on cards that are no longer boosted and yeah I've pretty much lost this so whatever just keep it going Now, there is one other type of PvP, and I will show you that in a bit here. Because this game, unlike Animation Throwdown, does have live PvP. And I'll get into that in just a moment as soon as this one's done. Let's end this, actually. Boom. Autoplay enabled. Auto. I lost. And I lost a fair bit of points here. 
You get 250 per win, you lose 2,000 per loss. So it's hard to climb up that. Okay, so let's go to the arena. Live battle. Now I'm in gold 2 division out of bronze, silver, gold, platinum. So I'm in the middle of gold right now. And you can see what kind of prizes you get. Here's what you generally get in gold. Some wind souls, some arena coins, and one of these. It's actually a pretty decent... I've had this actually. I've got the jackpot pack down there before. You can also sometimes get one of the one higher up. So I could get a platinum chest. Not often. But that's how you get this diamond chest. If you're in platinum and you get the bonus, you get, the, you get a diamond chest. And that thing is amazing. So anyway, let's go ahead and battle. I have 409 of the coins right now. And I'll turn this off. Now, again, the first one who drops... And I'm doing this at 3x speed. I could turn this back to 1, so you can... So it'll slow everything down, but I'm playing against the player anyway. You notice that one went up to delay 5. That's what I was talking about, and I thought it did that on the other PvP, but I guess not. So he's dropped that. Drop a healer. And yeah, it, it takes a while. Because he's probably on 1x also. He's got to wait for him to think. Nope, there he goes. So I'm going to go back up to 3x. Oh, I'll drop this. And you'll notice that he's got, you know, maxed out cards with runes. Always got to have maxed out cards with runes. So this one's going to die in the next hit, because this one's got a huge vengeance. That's the point of Spike here. See, vengeance 7. Every time he gets hit, 7, da seven damage to the opponent. Now, again, my opponent is probably going to win because my cards are designed. And you'll also notice that we're running a lot of the same cards. You'll see that a lot, too. Because there are some cards that are just better than others. And a lot of times, the, the real premium cards, they're okay. They're not fantastic, but they're okay. There, I think, is a premium card. It's hard to tell what, which ones the premiums are in this game, though. Whereas the previous game, you have the, well, this one's already comboed, so it must be a premium. Not true in this one. So again, like I say, that, although these are premium cards, you can get them through rewards as well. I am actually now pulling out ahead, so who knows? Maybe I will win this one. Wouldn't that be nice to actually win a card game on camera, right? Huh. Like, I can ever do that. So yeah, this one has the arena thing here. It's fun. It's nice. Do some butt kicking here. Aw, yeah. Maybe we will win. All right. So again, this thing has energy. It's meant that you have a limited number of plays. You can, of course, spend real money to get more plays. I will show you about the shop, what all is available that way. Just got to wait for this game to end. In this one, I can't just click, click, and go. So I have to either wait for my opponent to resign, wait to win, or resign myself. He resigned because he was like, yeah, no, I lose. So I got a chest. I got a gold chest, and it takes four hours to, to open. You can get up to four of them, and it just goes in order. Boom, 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 boom. So it'll do four hours here, then four hours, then four hours, then four hours. So you come back in 16 hours if you have all four of these. They'll all four be ready to go. You click, 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 and away you go. I'm not spending to open this for you guys. It's just not happening. So you've seen Adventure Mode. There's a lot of cool stuff there. Different levels have different abilities. This is supposed to return you to the ship. Sometimes it brings up the quest screen, which I hate when it does that because I don't want a quest screen. If I wanted the quest screen, I would press the quest button down here. See? Quests. But no, you do this and it drops you into quests. I hate that. Consider that a bug and annoys me. You do have the uh, menu down here. Now this does play in a window. It does play a full screen if you want it to be full screen. You can change the resolution and all that fun stuff. It is a PC game. And I want to make note of that because recently, like literally the evening after I did the review for Gems of War, the Steam version updated to a different engine 
it's using the Unity engine now, it is much more PC friendly. You can change resolutions, which you saw I had problem doing that on the stream. Well, now you can do it no problem. It's in the settings, change the resolution. It, unlike this game, it actually has volume sliders now, whereas this one's just on off. Here, I'll go to the settings. See, just on or off. Oh, mastery dialogue disabled. So I actually could turn this off and you could see the dialogue again. I didn't know that. See how useful it is? Group inventory cards, use screen shake, bulk savage rare, bulk salvage rares. I'll show you what that is. That is, if I had a bunch of, well, like this. It would either bulk just the common or it'll bulk the rares. But it won't do it if it's been upgraded. If it's been upgraded, it won't bulk. That's just how you do click and get rid of those to vaporize. And see, these are worth 30 each. Vaporize! And one nice thing about this game is... Say you've accidentally vaporized a card that you want. You can buy it back! It costs more. It, it does. It costs a lot more. But if you wanted to, you could click and buy one of these back. It shows you how many you've sold in. I've sold in 11 bullfrogs. Look at that. 11 of them. But all you have to do is go click and you can buy it back. For generally twice the price you paid for it. That you got for it. So you kind of don't want to do that. Most of the time. And as you see, there's a fairly good collection here. All your commons are still here. Well, I don't think the commons are. But the rares are still... Oh, there's the commons. All the commons are down here. Up to 60 by the looks of it. And the reason only 60 is... That's 4 times 15. I'm not kidding. You get 60 commons because you could quad fuse your entire deck, max it out with 60 cards. So if you really liked flying squirrels, and you wanted to make a deck of flying squirrels, you could have 15 flight wizard squirrels. And you would lose terribly. But you could do it! All right, and of course you can actually vaporize your items too. For example, if I had too many, if I like didn't want this rune of frost breath, or valor, or nullification, I could go. Oops, boop, get thirty of these. Which, when you have twenty, can make you a pouch, which you open up and it gets you rune stuff. So it's a good way to actually, you get runes you don't want, you can recycle them and make even more good thing. It's a good thing. I just haven't bothered doing it. I really should. So let's quickly upgrade a card and show you what it's like. I was working on... Where are you? You, I was working on. So upgrade that. And it shows you what, what you'll get when you upgrade. It turns green. Oop, need more dust. So there you go. So that's what upgrading looks like. So let's check out the store. And you get advertisements across the top, and of course they want you to pay, and oh, what's this down here? It's a VIP system. You know what I think about the VIP rewards. I'm generally not a huge fan, especially with just how expensive these can be. I don't mind it so much, because as you see, well, I've actually paid enough to get to the VIP tier that I wanted. Um, And I'll show you what these things do. Gears of War, Gears of War, Gems of War, just added five more tiers to their VIP system. Now, in that game, roughly for every dollar you spend, you get five points of VIP. You saw that I was VIP level three, and it gave me one minor advantage, which I actually do appreciate. And that's kind of all I really care for in that one. I'm, I might go higher at some point, Depends if I see stuff that I, you know, really want or go, mm, you know what, I can go ahead and spend some more money on this game. Because I, I do spend money on the games that I like. That is one thing. I don't just play free. If I really like a game, I'll throw them some money because they deserve it. You don't have to. I'm not saying you have to. That's why the games are free. But that's why they're encouraged that way. And that's 
they do want money after all they put all this effort into it and this is a lot of effort it's a good game the added tiers that they just had though and I remember I told you five points for one dollar their newest tiers cost upwards of 6,500 points to get the highest VIP tiers in that game you have to spend literally thousands of dollars on that game that's obscene that I don't like I have not spent anywhere near this on this game of course I'm also only VIP level 5 out of 15 so what did I get at level 5 well at level 1 you spend just a little bit of money basically you get the first item at Drake and Drake's and your in inventory cap increases by 50 that's pretty good. Instead of 100 cards, you can now get 150. You can spend a little bit more. goes up to 155. You get more bounties. You get another bounty here and ma more maximum energy. That's a really useful one to get. You know how I feel about the maximum energy. Five is one of the big ones, though. Your card increases from 65 to 100. So instead of 165, you have 200 now. You get the second item there. And you get this, the dust pack. And what is the dust pack? Well, when you go to Spellstones... Here's where you spend your gold on. Regular packs are 100. Rare packs cost, this is the real money currency. Epic packs. Then you can buy a 10 pack. This is kind of newish because they changed what was in the standard set. So this can get you some from the old standard. This is just the new standard. And this is the dust pack. Now what that does is you click it and go, yes, I want to buy it. It gives you 10 packs, just 10 standard packs. However, anything that's a common, or because I've set it to rare, rare gets automatically vaporized. It never even hits your inventory. That way, if you're getting close to your inventory cap, you can just click that, and it takes care of the cards right away. Because you only really want, let's be honest, in these games, like I said, the higher the, the, higher the rarity, the better the card is. You don't want commons and rares. You just don't. You want epics and legendaries and mythics if you can find them. So that's what it's going to end up with. So what about this Drake and Drake Emporium? You get this first one here, it's always available with gold, and it changes every day as you see the time left. Um, it can be all kinds of items. Rune stones, shells, and those are expensive. It's just the shell. You have to craft it still. You can get like arcane fragments you get all kinds of good stuff there with gold sometimes they're cheap it can be as low as like 150 or as high as 4,000 here the second stage is only available with the premium currency and it's a random epic or legendary premium card every day and the epics cost 150 I think the or the epics cost 60 the legendaries cost 150 then over here you get a random rune stone at level 9 and another random generally legendary I don't think I've ever seen an epic over here at level 13 and again those are going to be available with real currency now the arena points are used to buy these packs and it takes a fair amount of arena points to get just one of these epics so it's actually kind of useful to get these aren't the best cards but they're also not bad and oftentimes there'll be one in here that's just really good to have. And as you see, 24 days left, because that's how long the current bonus is. And of course, there are these cycling boxes here of various types. And it's generally the one that's been boosted lately, which is why this thing has a whole bunch of legends, or a whole bunch of insects in it. Oh, this is a fun one, actually. Because no delay. It just straight up sting and poison. So you just drop this to poison a creature, straight up. And of course, just like the boxes in Animation Throwdown, you have a limit to how many you can get. As you see, I've actually already purchased a couple of these. I got a Psychic Beetle, and a, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. You can get up to eight of these, of the Epics, so you can make up to two full fuse ones, and then up to four of the Legendaries to make a full fuse. And of course, if you buy all of them, if you buy the entire box out, it restarts. I'm not doing that. See? And, of course, it limits them out. They also have these random rotating things. Deals over here. Yes, they expect you to spend hundreds of dollars on this game. Oh, God, do they expect you to spend hundreds of dollars on this game. 
I'm not going to, but, eh, you know, people who want to, whatever. There's a Quadrant Insect Bundle for 400. You get a random rune. You get four insect packs, which kind of sucks. I mean, you'd prefer a quad insect. Okay, it does actually give you... Yeah, it gives you four of them, so you can quad fuse it. But you have to quad fuse it yourself. It's not already quad fused, so you have to spend a whole bunch of resources on it. And here you can see bunch of energy if you need it and that's a sale price too that's a good deal to get a whole bunch of energy there's also treasure and shards treasure is things like this is what i generally buy in fact i have it i don't have it active right now it's eight dollars it's kind of like a subscription thing you get 10 shards a day which is a better value than buying the shards separately but it takes longer to do you have to save up it increases your energy trap by 20 so again, you know how I feel about the extra en the extra energy means extra battles. If you're someone who doesn't play it so frequently that your battles have not all recharged, it just gives you more fights. Only two at this point, but whatever. So that's usually it's a good deal, and it's it's a way that for them to say, hey, you know, you get more stuff by doing this, but you have to play longer. And so that's kind of good for the players and good for them. And as you see, they always have these, I guess not always, this is new, and there's no timer on these. So these are your general deals. And here you can see, you can get 50 Ember Souls and such. You also have these that you can buy with your points. Now, I would suggest not doing so. Because these things actually come on sale once in a while, too. Like, this one will give you between 10 and 25. Every now and then you get a sale where you get 50 of them for 90. Guaranteed 50. Just wait for the sales. And then, of course, you can see how much the shards cost. Whereas this one gives you 50 shards for $5. That other one can get you up to 300 for $8 if you play every day. And, of course, you see how many VIP, VIP points you get. And that's a little bit bonus sale right now. You get an extra 10 shards for buying it, and it's a $10 one. But then you need an extra 5 shards on top of that. But you know how it goes. And, of course, it shows you the deals up top. Advertisement, advertisement. And you have the guilds. My guild is unfortunately dying and German. And I can... You can see what your opponent's deck is. You can battle your opponent's deck. Or not your opponent, your teammate. So I can see, oh, hey, there's what my opponent has. My teammate. Uh, my, cars are, my cards are going to be straight up better than his. So I'm just going to sit there, drop, drop, drop. And again, this is a game I tend to play for a few minutes a day or, you know, maybe up to half an hour. Just go through my turns and then chill out for a while while watching shows. See, I beat my, my, I beat my teammate there pretty handily, but my teammate's really low level. And you actually do have team chat. Like I said, this is a German clan, though, so most of this is in German. Because, well, I just picked a random clan. Which, I, it's kind of dying at this point. I should pick another one if I cared, but I don't. You have the mailbox coming up. You see what the upcoming events are. You see what the events that are currently going are. You have this also daily bonus when you log in. Which starts small. This is every month it restarts. So, this is July's bonus. It's July 2nd, so I've gotten two of the bonuses. Which does kind of hurt if you started in the middle of the month. For example, if you started it right now, you would not be able to get this this month. But you would be able to get the keys. And these are nice because this just straight up... Remember that? Remember those two cards that I got? I got them from last month's silver keys. Those are just straight up, you buy one of the epic packs. Those are handy. They also only last 25 days, so you got to use them pretty quickly. Well, at some point in the next month. And as you see, the prizes get higher and higher as you go, because the more participation, the better. And you can see your settings, profile, language, all that fun such, forum support. There's a lot of good features in this game. I find it amusing. It, there are worse games out there. This is one of the more fun ones I find to kill time, although to be honest, I spend most of my time doing the match three ones anymore, which... You'll see one of them coming up, too. As far as card games goes, I've seen better, I've seen worse. 
I think this one is a bit cash grabby. Probably not as bad as Animation Throwdown is. Animation Throwdown is really bad on the cash grabby part because they got to pay for that license of all those licensed characters. Five freaking shows. It's a lot of licensing. This one does not have the advertisement stuff, which is good because you, know, you can't get that on the Steam version. So you're not forced into buying the VIP pass or you get a gimped experience. You just you can play this you can play this straight without that problem. You can play this for free and as long as you're willing to take the time and it will take time, it will take months to build up a decent library. If you're willing to spend the time, you can do pretty well without having to spend any money on this game. Though spending a little bit is useful. It's not going to break the bank if you don't want it to. If you do want it to, well, hell, go nuts. There's all kinds of rewards you get. And again, you know, the more you spend, the more powerful cards you're going to get, the better you're going to do. That's all there is to it. Straight up, bigger cards are better. So if you have your deck full of premium mythics, you're gonna or you premium legendaries, you're gonna win more often than not. And I sound bitter about that because it really is effectively pay to win. But a lot of the players you're gonna be playing with against, if you're not a pay to win player, are also going to not be pay to win players. So you don't run into that as badly. Not as badly. But again, all the high-end stuff, like all those awards, the guild clashes, the contests to get the honeycombs, those are going to be won by people who've paid. The actual winners are the ones who paid. So don't expect to be getting those legendary, those, those legends cards anytime soon. Well, that's... That Spellstone, the sister game to Animation Throwdown, it has its pros, it has its cons. There's a lot to do. And as you see, the levels even over here. This stuff takes... Once you hit level 30, it takes a long time to level. But there are levels above 30, so more power to them. And unlike Animation Throwdown, it's not related to quests. The more you battle, the more levels you get. Great. It just has a soft cap of 30. As I say, pros, cons, there's some good stuff. There's It's still being updated. There's still a lot of content being added. So even if you get to, quote, the end game, unquote, there will still be things to do. More stuff coming up. It's not too bad on the free side, but it is pay to win in the end. My recommendation, I do like this one more than Animation Throwdown anymore, but Animation Throwdown has the characters from the shows, and come on, Futurama's awesome. So it's a toss-up between the two. Till next time, Internet, take care and enjoy the games you play.